Hey there, Theory and Community. This is Kona again. Today I'd like to talk to you about the importance of research. Um, no matter what you're doing, research is always important. Whether it's for school, for work, you want to learn a new technique, you want to learn about a s anything. It, it's really important and really wonderful. But um, particularly if there's something that you're going to say that you believe and something that you want to believe, research it, no matter what. It's just so important and so helpful. Uh, in terms of theory anthropy, I would suggest, you know, researching what that is, but also researching about your theriotype. Your theriotype is what you believe your animal to be. In my case, my theriotype is a wolf. Um, and while you're researching, Make sure that your sources are valid. You know, check if there's a semi-recent date, if it's off by a couple of years, that's usually okay. Um, check that there's a publisher, and check who that publisher is, if they've done other things. Uh, just, you know, basic English class lesson uh, can tell you if your source is valid. And I mean, it's okay to ask people like, hey, I'm not sure about this, can you, do you know about this, can you tell me about it? And, like, that's completely fine, that's considered, you know, uh, an interview. But, when you're asking somebody something, do make sure to go back afterwards and research on the information they gave you, because that can always be helpful, um, and you can make sure what they said was right, or maybe you might find out that they weren't right. I mean, not everybody's perfect, not everybody's going to know the answers, because it's impossible to know everything. So, yeah. Uh, today, in fact, I'm going to give a few facts, um, what I've researched and what I know. Again, I might be wrong. I'm not going to say I'm 100% correct on any of these facts of anything. So, uh, if you want to research after you watch this video, feel free to if you're like, hey Kona, you missed this fact or you messed this up, shoot me a message, I'll be happy to look it up. Uh, but yeah, so today I'll be talking about theory anthropy itself a little bit and about some basic facts of wolves. Uh, I'm sorry to any theorians whose theriotype is not a wolf. Uh, my research is based mainly in wolves because that is my theriotype. If you'd like me to do some research on your theriotype and uh, talk about it, I'd be really happy to. Uh, so, yeah, but let's get started. So, what is theory anthropy? I guess it'd be really good to know that. But, um, to put it in my own words, it's that you are very conscious of the fact that you are a human, you have a human body, but your soul and spirit within is that of another animal. Um, a lot of people, when you tell them what a Therian is, they get confused and they try and compare it to a spiritual guide. And that's not exactly correct. Um, a spiritual guide is when you have um, a separate spirit of an animal that's guiding you along your journey in life, um, wherein theorianthropy, it is not a separate soul or a separate entity. You and that your theriotype are one. There's no separation. Um, so that's, that's one difference between that. Uh, another thing I'd like to cover that I experience a lot myself is that of phantom limbs. And phantom limbs are their, their body parts of your theriotype that they're not visible, not viewable, not tangible, but you yourself, that you have this feeling that they're there. Uh, we don't physically have ears or tails as much as we may like to, but uh, that's why I believe that some, not all, but some Therians choose to wear tails or ears or fangs or what have you is it's to comfort that um, non-existence of that limb. Um, it, 
it's not always needed. That is a big misconception is that a lot of younger or newer Therians are like, oh, I have to have a tail if I'm going to be a Therian. That's not true at all. In fact, not all Therians wear tails. Not all. A lot of Therians don't even wear the tails, the fangs, the ears. It's it's a belief that the dress is just a comfort for those of us who feel those phantom limbs occasionally. Um, another thing I'd like to cover today are shifts, and you probably have heard of them. There are many, many different types of shifts. I honestly do not know them all. I will be covering a few of them that I know, and um, I will not go too, too in-depth into them. I'm just going to touch on them. We may come back and, like, <laughs> excuse me, go deeper into those shifts. But uh, today I'm going to be talking about the mental shifts, the dream shifts, and the sensory shifts. Uh, what a mental shift is, um, most of these names are very, you know, the name says it for itself, but a mental shift is when you take on attributes, or mental and personality attributes of your theriotype, such as you won't rely so much on emotion when you act and react, it'll be more on instinct. So you may act a little differently, you'll react differently, you may walk differently. It all depends on how intense the mental shift is and your stereotype and all of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the next shift is a dream shift. I mentioned this briefly in my last video. That is what I like to call the Therian's dream when you are your stereotype within your dream and you see yourself what you believe your spirit to be. Um, that's, that's the dream shift. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the sensory shift, again, is self-explanatory, but that is when, per your stereotype, your senses are heightened. Uh, you may smell better, hear better, see better, um, what have you. You may feel certain energies more intensely, uh, those type of things, your personality and all that. Um, yeah, so that's that's all I wanted to cover on theory anthropy, but then I'm going to uh, move on here to the wolf facts that I have I've researched and that I've learned. Um, let me start with, I'll show you guys a book that I have that I found immensely helpful. I, it's my favorite book, but um, it's called Spirit of the Wolf by um, Sean Ellis and Monty Sloan. It's, it's a beautiful book. It's very informational. It's just, it's amazing. I highly suggest it. Um, even if you're not a Therian and you just want to learn about wolves, it's, it's a great book. But, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I guess I'll start with ranking. There's a lot of, sometimes I think, confusion that I'd just like to, to clear up a little bit. Uh, in, in wolf packs, the ranks go alpha, beta, omega, subordinates. Um, a lot of wolf theory impacts tend to add uh, deltas and gammas, and those don't exist in a real wolf pack. I'm not going to like tell anybody how to uh, run their Therio Therian pack, excuse me, because that's that's not my job, and I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying if you'd like to uh, run it more accurately to the actual wolf pack, you should stick to the alphas, betas, omegas, and subordinates. <coughs> uh, within the subordinates, however, there are, um, there can be specialty ranks where an alpha will tell a certain 
subordinate, you have this job, uh, say it's hunting or, or something to that respect. Um, and that is how that goes. And a lot of people <clears throat> tend to think that the Omegas have, are the lowest rank in the pack, and this isn't necessarily true. They're actually highly respected within the pack. They, they do get good meat, I believe. Um, and uh, the, a lot of the reasons why people think they are the lowest rank is because they do get beat up a lot. They, um, they're there to relieve stress and relieve tension and try to break up fights uh, or try and stop fights from happening in the first place. So, um, yeah, they, they do tend to get beat up a lot. They may not last long within the pack, whether it's because of death or because they're fed up and they leave. Um, and that's how that goes. And in terms of uh, pelt color, when it comes to uh, <coughs> ranking, the higher the rank is, the darker the wolf will generally be. This isn't to say that the lowest rank will be a lightly colored wolf. The, no, wolves can have a um, can have a naturally dark pelt, but um, when per the types of meat that they eat, um, because of their higher ranks, the guard fur on the back of the wolves will become darker. So alphas and betas and uh, higher ranks are generally have darker fur because they eat the better meat. Um, the last thing I'm going to touch on is a very big misconception about wolves is that they howl at the moon. <laughs> Wolves don't actually howl at the moon. The reasons wolves will, or excuse me, the reason wolves will howl at all is because they are trying to reunite with their pack. They are trying to warn their pack of something. They're trying to say, or they're trying to let their pack know where they are. They will also howl to warn other packs to stay away. They don't howl at any particular moon or any particular type of night. Uh, they howl as communication, just as humans talk to each other or yell to each other. Um, however, there is one connection that you could possibly make between wolves and Therians to the moon. Um, I guess I'll start that off with the fact that regardless of if you're a Therian or not, your body is going to be affected by the full moon. The The moon pushes and pulls the tide. It's, it's a commonly known fact. But your body is made up mainly of water. So when the moon is in such a high state like that, it will affect you, no matter who you are, what you are. Um, yes. But because the... There, Excuse me. There are some of us who believe that the the moon admits a certain type of energy that some people are more susceptible to, especially Therians, because Therians thrive on energy. That's what we live for, and that's how we exist almost. And um, to put it into perspective, the sun is a big ball of energy, and that energy, or that sunlight is being reflected off the moon and hitting the earth. And I believe that can affect uh, certain people and especially Therians. So yes. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if I stumbled a little bit. Um, and my, my coughing, I have a bit of a phlegm. But yes, please, please, please do your research and just continue to be yourself, I guess. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.